today, Pirelli launched two brand new road tyres, and here they are. We have the P0 Race and the P0 Road. So in this video, I'll give you all the tech details on these new tyres, what they cost, how much they weigh, all the tech details in them, and later I'll fit them to the bike and go for a ride and see how they perform and give you my first ride thoughts on these new tyres. Tyres, as you know, are the most important part of the bike because it's your contact with the road surface. So grip, rolling resistance, durability, all those factors are really important in a tyre. And most people know that a good tyre makes a real performance benefit on a road bike and it's worth investing quite a bit of money in a good tyre for all those performance reasons. So these tyres replace the original P0 Velo launched in 2017. And since then, the company has been really busy. They certainly haven't put their feet up and rested on their laurels. They have been busy developing new tyres. And last year we saw two really good, in my opinion, tubular tyres, the TLR and TLR SL, which in my opinion are some of the best tubular tyres you can currently buy. They follow the latest ET RTO standards, so really easy to fit. Um, lots of nice features on the tyres. And these new tyres here borrow much of the technology first seen in their tubular tyres in terms of tread design and tread compound but with their simplicity, the usability of an inner tube setup. Now, most people know I really like tubeless. It's my personal go-to setup, but I know lots of people don't like tubeless because of compatibility issues and what happens when you get a puncture. And if you never puncture, then a clincher tire with an inner tube is still a really good setup and it's still a fast setup, faster than a tub tire. And we're seeing quite a few pros now switching to inner tubes and clincher tires in some of the biggest races in the world with quite a bit of success. So let's have a closer look at the tyres and the P0 race here, as the name suggests, is a race tyre, so the best performance. And then we have the P0 road, which is a more affordable, uh, more durable, more kind of fit and forget training tyre. These cost £38 and these are £55. But shared technology across both tyres and they both come in four widths, 24, 26, 28 and 30 and I've gone for 28 in both to test, so I can not worry about the width and test both tires and see how they perform. So the goal for these tires was better performance in every aspect. So improved rolling resistance, better smoothness, better comfort. And they use the same Smart Evo, a three polymer tread compound as the tubular tires we saw last year. These use a 120 TPI construction, which is different to the tubular tires but a tread compound, a tread pattern is the same as a tubular tyre. And in my experience, that was a really good performance tyre, really low roll resistance, really good grip in a dry and wet. So good to see that new tread compound in these new clincher tyres. Another change to the tyres is in adopting the latest ETRTO standards. Now ETRTO is a governing body for standards when it comes to tyres, not just bicycles, but all uh, motor vehicles as well. And these now have a wider tread area which is said to improve roll resistance, punch resistance, and cornering control as well. And then underneath the tire, we have a brand new and wider puncture protecting band of Aramid material. They call it Tech Belt Road, designed to improve punch resistance in a wide range of conditions. So these are the race tires designed for well, racing or people who want the best performance from their tire. So low weight, good roll resistance, and all the other performance metrics you get in a high end tire and are prepared to pay for it. If you want a more durable tyre, not for racing, but for riding, training, then the new road might be a tyre for you. So a lower entry price, £38 compared to £55 on the race. We get a lot of the same technology, which is a good thing. Because the focus for these tyres is on durability, they have a different tread compound. So smart Evo on these, just Evo on these. So not as smart, but more durable. So more durable, more rugged material, longer lasting, better wear life, not gonna punch it as easily as these, because that is the compromise with a top end race tire, is that adding more puncture protecting material does add weight. So it's a real balance, a real compromise. But with these, because they are focused on being as durable as possible, the weight penalty is less of a problem for the improved durability and long life you get from these tires. We have quite a different tread uh, pattern as well compared to the race tires. So more kind of grooves in the tire. Now, I'm not really sold on the benefits of grooves in tires because you're not going at a speed where aquaplaning is ever an issue on a bicycle, but they have longer grooves on them for what it's worth. 
So those are new tyres, which will you choose? Let me know down in the comment section below. So brand new tyres, but what's really important with a good tyre is tyre pressure. And to their credit, Pirelli have done a lot of work here with the tubular tyres last year. And they basically recommend tyre pressures for different scenarios, different rider weights, and it's put right here on the packaging and on their website as well. So very simply, they give you a recommended pressure for a different width tyre on a different width rim measured on the inside and then adjustments for wet roads for more comfort different requirements so it makes it really easy to get the tire pressure perfect and it's a really good starting point you can go higher or lower from that baseline so that's a big improvement on the old days when people's tire pressure recommendation would basically be whatever it said on the sidewall and usually it'd be max 120 so people would pump the tire to 120 which as we know now, with all the studies done into tire pressure and the importance of tire pressure in performance, roll resistance and comfort, we know that lower pressures are better. So Pirelli, in doing all this research, all this work, and putting it right here on the box, makes it easier to get the right pressure to get the best performance out of the tires. So yeah, uh, hats off to Pirelli for all this work, which is really fundamental to get a better performance out of your tyres. And hopefully we can see other tyre manufacturers also embracing this sort of work as well. It just makes it so much easier for the consumer, for the customer to get the tyres to the right pressure for their weight, for their rim width and other factors. The other interesting aspect is they've adopted the WAM and RAM measurement system introduced by 3T and Gerard Vrooman, which basically gives the actual dimensions of the tyre on different width rims. So if you have tight clearance on an aero road bike, perhaps, then you know what tire on different rims, what the actual dimensions will be, so there'll be no clearance issues. And as we know, if a tire says 28 on the sidewall, it won't necessarily be 28. It will be narrower or wider, depending on the rim width. And this wham and ram is a really smart way of getting around all those issues. So yeah, hats off to Pirelli again for adopting wham and ram, and I hope other tire manufacturers also embrace that system and for giving us real world tire pressures to get the best out of our new tires. So new tires, that's enough waffle. Uh, links down below, you can go and buy them. Now time to fit them to a bike and see how they perform. So two rides, one ride on each set of tires, totaling about 180 kilometers. I use the same bike, the BMC Team Machine, Review coming soon. The same wheels, the same width tyres, the same tyre pressures, and I rode pretty much the same routes and the same roads. So same, mostly dry conditions with quite a bit of standing water, puddles, quite a lot of grit, sand, and mud and gravel on the roads in places. Mostly quite rough, coarse road surfaces and some brand new surface roads, trying to test tyres in as many variable conditions as possible but I'll keep riding the tyres and see how they perform down the line. So let's start with the new P0 race tyres and my first impressions are extremely good. These feel everything you want in a high-end road race tyre. It feels fast, has a great amount of grip and gives a nice secure feeling in the corners and through tricky road conditions. They provide great cornering and steering feel too and they let you push hard into the corner without fear of the tyre losing grip. They feel extremely compliant too and definitely add more smoothness to the bike. They have a really wonderful, supple feel you want from a high-end road tire. And when I fit the tires, you can feel how thin the tire carcass is, and that helps the tire to deform over rough roads. So I'm very impressed, and I hate to use an overused phrase, but it is a confidence-inspiring tire. And then to the new P0 road tires. And what impresses about these tires is how they offer much of the performance of the more expensive race tires, but at a more affordable price point with very little trade-off. They don't feel as compliant though, not as supple as the race tires, and you can feel a difference when you fit them. There's more material in the tires across the tread, and the tire isn't quite as flexible. They still carry good speed on the road though, perhaps not as fast feeling as the race tires. Despite the low grade tread compound, they offer a nice secure feeling in the corners. They just don't give you as much feel of the road surface as the race tires, and maybe transmit more of a surface than you want. Now these are your first impressions, so I can't talk about durability as I mentioned earlier, so I'll keep riding them and see how they perform in the longer term. But first impressions are good. The high-end race tyres offers everything you want in a high-end road race tyre. It's lightweight, fast rolling, grippy in the corners and seems very durable so far. 
The more affordable road tyre offers much other performance compared to the higher end tyres at a lower price point and has an emphasis on durability, which is great if you're not racing, but you want a tyre that you can fit and forget and will last a long time. So first impressions are really good for both tyres then and easy to recommend if you're in the market for a new tyre. First impressions only though, and I will continue riding tyres and see how they perform over the long term. A definite question mark over durability, especially on the high end race tyres. That's all for now. If you've got any questions, put them down below. Um, if you enjoyed watching the video, hit the like button, subscribe if you haven't already, and I'll see you all again next time. Thanks so much for watching.